For the past two years, I've been creating videos that teach people how to navigate their way through the sometimes confusing world of self-publishing low and medium content books to sell on Amazon. Now, for the most part, I've stuck to the creative aspect of that process, meaning graphic design, layouts, and marketing. I really tried to steer clear of all of the hype that tends to draw so many people into self-publishing in the first place. And over the years, I've watched my fair share of KDP videos that just suck you right in with their claims of financial riches. You know the ones I'm talking about. All you have to do is create this one simple little coloring book and you too can be earning $100,000 a month in royalties. And although those videos aren't lying, I mean, there are plenty of low and medium content books in the Amazon marketplace that are making some really good money. I just can't help but feel that they're not telling the whole story. You see, there are basically three methods for making money with KDP self-publishing. And pretty much every book on the Amazon marketplace is using one of these three methods. So in this video, I'm going to break down those three methods into their simplest terms so that you'll know exactly what you're getting into and what to expect before you even publish your first book. So if you're somebody who's been thinking about getting into self-publishing or somebody who's been doing it for a while but just not getting the results that you were expecting, then stick around because this video is for you. Hey guys, Craig here. Hope everybody's doing well. Okay, so there's a misconception throughout the KDP community, especially among the newer publishers, that there's a way to be extremely successful at self-publishing that requires very little time, very little effort, very little skill, and very little money. And that's a lie. Are there ways of creating a KDP self-publishing business that require a little less effort? Sure. Is there a method to succeed at KDP that doesn't require you to have an abundance of artistic talent? Absolutely. Is it possible to make money with KDP without having to sacrifice every hour of your spare time to do it? Of course there is. And can you create a passive income for yourself with self-publishing that doesn't require you to cash in your children's college fund to do so? Absolutely. That being said, whether it's effort, skill, time, or money, every single method of making money with KDP is going to require you to increase your contribution to at least one of those areas in order to succeed. You see, there are basically three methods for selling low and medium content books with KDP. And each of these methods has its own requirements. And in this video, I'm going to break down those three methods so that you'll have a much better idea of how this whole self-publishing low and medium content book business actually works. So if you're ready, let's get to it. Okay, so the first method that I want to go over is the one that probably attracts most people to low and medium content book publishing in the first place. And that's the one that doesn't require you to promote your books outside of the Amazon marketplace or to spend any money on Amazon ad campaigns. Now at first glance, this may sound like it would be the easiest way to make money with KDP. But the truth is, every method of making money with KDP comes with its own pros and cons. So when I first got started with KDP, I did the exact same thing that most of you who are watching this video did when you were getting started. And that is, follow the advice from all of the KDP gurus who were posting videos on YouTube. And at that time, the advice I was getting from them was all pretty much the same. Find yourself a niche that has very little competition, but at the same time still has a few really good sellers in it. Sound familiar? So since I was in the midst of building a drawing-related YouTube channel, I thought it only fitting that I create a drawing-related medium content book to sell. So I created a drawing prompt book. Now, after doing a little research, I quickly realized that the category of drawing prompt books actually had quite a bit of competition in it, so I decided to niche down. Because my drawing style tends to lean towards funny drawings, I thought, why not create a funny drawing prompt book? That dropped the competition down dramatically. Then I thought, well, my drawings are usually very cartoonish in nature, so why not create a cartoon drawing prompt book? That brought the competition down even more. And since what I normally draw tends to be character oriented, I figured why not create a character drawing prompt book? That lowered the competition even further. But then I thought creating three drawing prompt books really seems like a lot of work. So I decided to just cram them all into one book. And shortly after that, my funny cartoon character themed drawing prompt book was born. Now if I search all of these niches, you can see that my book appears on the first page of each one. And the reason it's there is because I screwed up royally while I was doing my research. And this is a mistake that a lot of you may be making as well. You see, I came to this niche and saw that it had very little competition. And from what I had been told, that was a really good sign. 
And as I scroll down the page looking for a few big sellers, I was finding them. I mean, look at some of these BSRs. There are books in here that are selling over a thousand copies per month. So I thought, okay, this is my niche. What I didn't realize is that very few of these books were actually being purchased under this search term. And those that were being purchased were being purchased as an impulse buy, not because it was what the customer was looking for. You see, with the exception of these two books at the very top, none of these books are actually character drawing prompt books. Some of them are drawing prompt books, but not focused on character drawing. And the rest of them are instructional character design books, but not drawing prompt books. In fact, if I jump onto the second page of search, there isn't a single character drawing prompt book in the lot. So is it any wonder why my book is able to organically rank on page one of this search term? You see, when a customer takes the time to type in a specific query into the search bar, it's because they're looking for that type of book, not one that's similar to it. So if there are only a handful of books that fit that description, then Amazon is gonna make sure that that customer sees them first. And then after that, it'll just populate the page with whatever it thinks the customer may also be interested in. So I learned something that day. You know what else I learned? Categories that have very little competition also tend to have very little of something else. Customers. If the term drawing prompt is getting about 10,000 searches per month, you can bet that the niche term character drawing prompt is probably getting about 100 searches per month in comparison. So now you're all probably wondering, if this method is so bad, then why am I showing it to you? It's because as low as the customer traffic volume is, due to the extremely low competition, there is still potential to make a little money here. If we take a look at my royalty estimator for this book in KDP, you can see that it's made around $90 in royalties over the past three years. Now just keep in mind that I set my royalties very low on this book. I think it's around $1. And the reason for that is because my number one priority was never really to make money off of this book. I uploaded it so that I could get a better understanding of the process of uploading to KDP so that I could create videos for my YouTube channel teaching all of you how to do it. So if I had set my royalty to around $3, which I could have and still made the same amount of sales due to the extremely low competition, I would have made about three times this amount. Although the royalties are fairly low, it still has consistently sold around three books per month on average over that three year period. And keep in mind that there is virtually no ad spend on this book. In fact, I think I placed an ad on it once after lowering the price just to see if it would ramp up the sales a bit. And after spending $4 without any sales, I canceled it. So I haven't spent any money on promoting this book, nor have I made any real effort to promote the book off of the Amazon marketplace either. The vast majority of sales that you're seeing are coming from customers buying the book while searching one of those three niche search terms that I just mentioned. And I know this for a fact because any external promoting that I've done has involved using my Amazon affiliate links. So when I sell a book through one of those links, I receive a small commission on my own book in addition to the royalty. And I think I've received two commissions on this book in the past three years. So the majority of the sales on this book are coming organically from the Amazon marketplace. So if your game plan is to find low competition, low customer niches, and then just upload a better version of the books that are already in that niche, and you don't wanna spend any of your time or money promoting your book, then these are the kind of results you should expect. This performance would be considered an average result for most low and medium content books uploaded through KDP. Ask anyone who's making money with KDP, and they'll tell you that 20% of their books make 80% of their money. So if I was to ask one of those people to rank the performance of this book compared to the top 20% of their books, they would probably tell me that this book is really underperforming. But if I was to ask them to compare it to the bottom 80% of their books, they would probably say that its performance was average or maybe even above average. Your goal when using this method to market your books is to hopefully have a handful of your books actually take off and start making thousands of sales every month without having to promote them in any way. But if you're going into this expecting that to happen, then chances are you're gonna be very disappointed because without any type of promotion, the odds are against you. So looking at it from a worst case scenario, if I wanted to make, let's say $30,000 per year from my KDP business, and I was gonna use this method to market my books, then I would need to publish at least a thousand books. And if we go back to those four contributions of effort, skill, time, and money, although this doesn't require any money or real effort on your part as far as promotion goes, it will still require a little skill to create some good quality books and a whole lot of time to create hundreds if not thousands of books. 
depending on how big of a passive income you want to make. So as you can see, although this method doesn't really require a lot of you outside of creating books, you still have to create a lot of books. And that's going to take a lot of time and a little bit of skill on your part. Okay, so if the thought of creating thousands of books just doesn't do it for you, then maybe method number two will be a little more your style. Now, one thing that I want to point out is that when it comes to marketing your medium or low content books, your number one goal is always going to be to try to get your books to rank on page one of search. And this is true regardless of the method that you're using to market your books. If your book is showing up any further down than page one, your odds of making a sale are going to be reduced dramatically the further down you go. Amazon places the top selling books of any particular niche on that first page. Which means if a customer is looking for a certain type of book, odds are 80% of the time they'll find what it is they're looking for on that first page. So as you saw in method one, one of the pros of publishing in a niche that has little competition is that it's much easier to rank on the first page of search organically without any promotion. That being said, one of the cons of doing that is that there are far fewer potential customers to promote your book to. Well, if this is the case, then why do so many KDP gurus tell us to do it? It's because what they're trying to do is get you to capitalize on an up and coming trend. Let me give you an example. So if we look at the blank comic book niche, as saturated as this niche is, you can see that the biggest seller in this niche in 2023 is still one of the very first books that was ever published in this category from all the way back in 2016. Now back in 2016, do you think that the author of this book was just perusing the Amazon marketplace and then one day decided to enter in the search query for blank comic book templates, saw that people were searching for the term, and then when he clicked on it, found out that the search term had zero results? I highly doubt it. In fact, I remember when these type of books started becoming available on Amazon. I used to draw my own webcomic back around 2008. And I distinctly remember another webcomic artist who used to teach his viewers how to draw comics in his blog posts. And he would always start his tutorial by drawing an empty panel. After months of doing that, he realized that it would just be quicker to create a book of blank panels and then just make it available to all of his viewers. Back in those days, KDP didn't exist yet, so he would have had to have used CreateSpace to publish his book. Now, I don't know if that comic artist is the same guy who uploaded this book, but it was around the same time. The point that I'm trying to make is that the creator of the first blank comic book template didn't stumble upon an up and coming niche. He created the niche when he uploaded his book. And the customers for that book didn't come from the Amazon marketplace in the beginning. They came from his webcomic blog. And as the book began to sell more and more copies, other self publishers began to see the demand for the book and started creating their own blank comic book templates as an attempt to try and capitalize on the trend. Now the first 8-10 to 10 people to publish their blank comic books all made really good money without having to do very much in the way of promotion. And that's simply because there wasn't very much competition back then. So all of their books organically landed on page 1 of search. And many of those books are still making good money today. But as more and more people began uploading their own blank comic book templates, the marketplace began to saturate. And it became almost impossible to rank on the first page of search without spending money on ads. When you first publish a book, there are only three ways to get ranked on the first page of search. The first is to do what I did in method one and find a niche with almost no competition. The second is to sell a lot of books using some type of promotional campaign outside of the Amazon marketplace, which will cause Amazon to move your book up higher in the search results. And I go over some of these promotional methods in my video 10 tips on how to promote your KDP books for free. I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one. Now the third and final way to get your new book ranked on the first page of search is to spend money on Amazon ads. If you win the bid on an ad spot, your book will appear as a sponsored advertisement on one of the search pages. So that's why when you're searching for a niche to publish in, you want low competition and only a few books that are selling. There are only about 65 spots on the typical search page. 16 if you're talking about the general search. So if there are more than 65 books that fall under the category of the niche that you're searching, it's going to be very difficult to rank organically on that first page without advertising. Now it goes without saying that regardless of which method you're using to market your books, your number one priority is always going to be to create a high quality professional looking book. You want your new book to be able to visually go toe to toe with the best selling book on that first page. And that includes both the cover and the interior. But the second and most important thing that you need to do is make sure that your book stands out among all of the other books. 
I can't stress enough how much you do not want to be creating a generic copy of another book that's already selling well in the Amazon marketplace. One of the key factors that determines whether a customer buys a book or not are the number of positive reviews it has. And in this day and age, reviews are king. And if your book with zero reviews is a direct knockoff of a more popular book that has a thousand reviews, you are going to lose that sale to the more popular book 100% of the time. There's no reason for a customer to take a chance on a book that has no reviews, especially if it looks exactly like another book that has been highly rated by other Amazon customers. So try to find a way to make your book stand out among all the others. And that can result in a lot more sales. So let's recap method number two for marketing your low and medium content books. You're looking for a niche with low competition and only a few good sellers. Remember, you're looking for a niche that's just starting to trend, not one that's been trending for years. Yes, you want there to be proof that there's a demand for your type of book, but you don't want there to be so much proof that your book won't be able to organically rank on the first page of search without spending money on ads or spending time on off-market promotions. And if you use this method and you get good at finding niches that are starting to trend, then due to the higher organic search rankings, as well as the potential to make more sales on each book you publish, you shouldn't have to create anywhere near as many books as you would using the first method. Your goal is to be one of the first few people in on that trend, so that you can continue to write it for many years to come, just like all of those blank comic book templates did. So that raises a question. If a niche has been trending for many years and has quite a few big sellers, as well as even more moderate sellers, does that mean that you should stay away from it because it's saturated? And the answer to that question is hell no. And this brings us to method number three. Now out of the three methods of making money with KDP, this next method has the potential to make the most money by far. That being said, this may not be the method for those who are just getting started. And the reason for that is because this is the method that has the potential to also lose the most money. So if you're someone who's just getting started in the whole KDP self-publishing business, if I were you, I would start out using method one or two at least until you get your whole book creation process dialed in, because your basic low quality book will not cut it using this method. When you use this method that I'm about to show you, you're gonna be going head to head against all of the top selling books on Amazon. And there's gonna be so much competition, it's gonna make your head spin. Now remember how in the last two methods I told you that if you wanted to succeed, it was extremely important that you be uploading quality books that are somewhat unique compared to all of the other books in that niche? That requirement is 100 times more important when using this method. I don't care how much money you're spending on Amazon ads or how much time you're putting in promoting your books outside of the Amazon marketplace. If your book is just a low quality knockoff of some other book that is already selling well on Amazon, then your book is not gonna sell. So for that reason, let's just skip to the part where you've already created a professional quality book that stylistically is quite a bit different from anything else that's selling in the niche that you're targeting. Now, just like the other two methods, your number one goal is to get your book ranked on the first page of search. But unlike the other two methods, there are only two options to make that happen. The first is by using an ongoing Amazon ad campaign that is consistently winning the bids for the sponsored ad spots on that first page of search. This method is definitely going to dip into your pocketbook, but if you do it right, it'll definitely be worth it in the end. And the second option is to roll up your sleeves and create a perpetual promotional campaign outside of the Amazon marketplace that will continue to drive customers to your books well into the future. And just know that although this option will require more work on your part, it's going to require a lot less money and will have the potential to double, triple, and even quadruple the amount of money that you can make over just using Amazon ads alone. Now, because the first option is quite a bit easier, I'm going to focus on that one first. Now I'm not going to go through how to set up an ad campaign because that's a topic that needs its own video. But if you want me to create a video on how to do that, let me know in the comments section below. For this video, I'm just going to focus on how to target your ads for optimal success. Now if you've watched any videos on how to create an Amazon ad campaign for low and medium content books, then I'm sure you've heard people say to just set your bids really low and let them ride indefinitely. And that can be a useful advertising method in certain situations, but not in this one. Because there's so much competition, the bid prices are going to be fairly high. And if you want to win a bid on the first page of search, then you're going to have to pay for it. That being said, there's still a right and wrong way to go about doing it. So let's just use a chibi coloring book as an example. 
Now this is a niche that has been steadily growing in popularity over the past few years and I would say that it's fairly saturated by this point. So if we jump inside of Amazon ads and take a look at a few different keyword search terms that could be targeted to promote a chibi coloring book, you'll find that they all have their pros and cons. So if we take a look at this first term, activity books for kids, this is definitely a keyword search term that could be targeted when promoting a coloring book because coloring books most definitely fall under the category of activity books. And because it's such a broad term that includes coloring books, puzzle books, word books, and so on, the customer traffic volume is gonna be huge in this category, hence the higher bid range. So that would be a pro. A con of targeting this term is that you have no way of knowing what a potential customer is actually looking for when searching through this niche. I think most parents who are searching through this niche are pretty much just looking for a way to keep their kid quiet for a few hours. So pretty much any type of activity book is fair game. That being said, you have no way of knowing what a customer is thinking when they're looking for an activity book. They may be thinking, okay, if I buy my son a word search puzzle, all he's going to need is a pencil. And we have those. But if I buy him a coloring book, then I'm going to have to buy him pencil crayons. And the last time I left him alone with pencil crayons, he drew all over my damn walls. So a coloring book is definitely out of the question. So that's a customer that you're not going to get. But that's not really a problem, because if that customer isn't interested in buying a coloring book, then the odds of them clicking on your sponsored advertisement is probably pretty low, so it's not going to cost you anything if they pass your ad buy. Remember, when it comes to Amazon ads, you only pay when someone actually clicks on your ad. And that's the reason why it can be extremely profitable to promote your books in these broader niches. Because the volume of customer traffic is so much higher, the potential to make a sale is also much greater. But with higher potential profits comes higher bid ranges. If we take a look at this bid range, you can see that the suggested bid is around $1.44. Now keep in mind that the ad spots that you're bidding on here are not only on page one of search. You're bidding on ad spots that go all the way down to page 75. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say that I can't figure out why no one is clicking on my book ad and they just automatically assume that their book sucks. But that's not necessarily the case. If you're bidding on a search term like this and your bid is only 10 cents, then your ad will still be getting a lot of impressions even though your bid is so low, but the majority of them will be appearing between page 20 and page 75 of search. And if you're wondering why no one is clicking on your ad, it's because there aren't any customers going down that far in search. If you want your book ad to be on page 1 of search, then you're going to have to be bidding at the high end of this bid range. Which means if you have a $3 royalty on your book and you're bidding $1.50 per click, you're going to have to be selling a book every two clicks or else you're going to be losing money. And it's for this reason that I don't recommend placing ads in these broader categories when you're first launching your book. What you want to do instead is first get proof that there's actually a demand for your book by targeting the more niche categories that have the lower bid ranges. Once you start getting sales in those smaller niches and you have proof that people actually want your book, then you can go into the broader niche categories with higher bid ranges. So if we were to narrow down our search term to just coloring book for kids, although it's still a very broad niche, you have at least removed all of the non-coloring activity books from the competition. And because there's lower competition and lower customer traffic volume, there's also a lower bid range. Now when most parents are looking for a coloring book, I think pretty much any coloring book will do, just as long as it's really well done and they think that their kid will like it. If you were to ask most parents what a chibi is, you'd be pretty hard pressed to find one who could tell you. But there are going to be situations where a child specifically asks for a chibi coloring book, so niching down your search term would definitely be beneficial for that purpose. That being said, if you were to only target the more niche chibi coloring book search term, then you'd be missing out on all of the potential sales that you could be getting from parents who have no idea what a chibi is and just want to buy a coloring book with cute characters in it. So once again, you need to weigh the pros and cons here. But personally, I think that when you're first publishing your book, that you should start by targeting the more niche terms like chibi coloring book and save yourself some money with the lower target bid range just until you find out there's actually a demand for your book. And because of the lower bid range, you can actually land a first page ad spot with a bid as low as 50 cents, compared to the $1.50 it would have cost you in the broader niche category. So if you have a $3 royalty on your book, now you only need to get a sale every six clicks instead of every three. That gives you a little bit more breathing room. 
Now, if your book starts selling really well, only then should you start targeting the broader search terms with the higher bid ranges. Now, before I go any further, there's something that I want to say. If you're placing ads in these lower niche categories and you're bidding toward the higher end of the range and getting a lot of impressions with almost no clicks, it's probably for one of two reasons. One, you're targeting the wrong search term and people aren't clicking on your ad because it's not what they're searching for. The second reason is your book cover just isn't cutting it and people aren't attracted to it. Now, if you're getting a lot of clicks but nobody's buying your book, then this too is for one of two reasons. One, people just can't get past the fact that your book doesn't have any reviews. And unfortunately, this is the world we live in and there's really no way to get around that. The best thing you can do in that situation is to try targeting different search terms and hopefully you'll have better success with the other ones. Now, the second reason people aren't buying your book after clicking on your ad is because your book's interior just isn't cutting it. Whether it's just poor quality or because it's just too close to some other book, the fact is customers just aren't interested in buying it. And this can be really hard to admit sometimes, but you have to do it. There's no point in throwing good money after bad. If you keep spending ad money on a poorly created book, you're just going to be losing money. The best thing you can do is just remove the ads, let the book try and find sales organically on its own, and then go back to the drawing board, learn from your mistakes, and create something better. And just know that if your book is selling to the point where your ad costs are pretty much eating up all of your royalties, but you're still breaking even, then just let those ads run. When you first publish your book, it's not about making money, it's about making sales. More sales helps to move your book up in the search ranking, and more sales also results in more reviews, which will eventually lead to more organic sales in the future. What you're trying to accomplish in the beginning is just to get your book ranked high and loaded with reviews. If you can achieve that without losing too much money on ad spend, then when you do eventually remove your ads, your book will still be making organic sales and ranking high in search, and should continue making sales well into the future. Now before I move on from placing ads, just know that niching down too far is not necessarily a good thing. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I start to niche down from chibi coloring book to the more specific chibi boys coloring book or chibi animal coloring book, you can see that the bid ranges start to go back up. So why is this? It's because everyone and their mother who is publishing chibi coloring books is trying to get their book to rank at the top of the first page of search. And it's usually easier to do when there's less competition, so they're niching down as far as they can go. Unfortunately, since there are so many sellers bidding for those few ad spots in these niche categories, the bid ranges are being driven up proportionately. Even though the customer traffic volume in the broader search category is probably going to be much higher than it is in either of these niche categories. So it's actually going to be much easier and cheaper to get a first page ad spot in the broader category than it would be in the more niche category. And the odds of you selling a book in that broader category could potentially be better as well, just due to the increased customer traffic. Okay, let's move on to the second way of making money with this third marketing method. Now, as I said a few minutes ago, this method that I'm about to show you is going to be far more time consuming and it's going to take a lot more effort on your part to be successful at. That being said, the potential to make money with this method is going to be tenfold. Now I get asked all the time by my viewers why I keep creating videos on how to get started on YouTube, especially since they only get a few hundred views each, whereas my self-publishing videos get thousands and even tens of thousands of views each. Surely I make more money off of those videos. And they're right, I do. But if you're somebody who wants to create a sustainable passive income for yourself, then self-publishing is only going to be one part of the equation. The reason that I actually created this video is because I was watching a YouTube video from another content creator that was about the latest hot niche in KDP, and it was talking about kawaii coloring books as well as how to draw books. And it was a really good video. But one of the books that was mentioned in the video was this one, Kawaii Doodle Class by Pick Candle. And the message that I took from that video was that all you have to do is create a how to draw book showing people how to draw these simple little kawaii characters and you too could be making a thousand dollars per month in passive income off of one single book. Now the author of this book goes by the pen name Pick Candle and she has a few of these kawaii how to draw books on Amazon and they all do pretty well. I mean this book alone is easily making a thousand dollars per month in royalties. But unless you're a doodle fanatic like me then you've probably never heard of Pick Candle. You see, Pick Candle is a very well-known and loved doodle artist on YouTube, 
who has over 600,000 subscribers on our channel and whose videos get millions of views. So exactly what does Pick Candle do on her YouTube channel? She shows people her process for doodling and then she teaches them how to do it. So how much money do you think that she spends on Amazon ads every month to get sales on her books? If I had to guess, I'd say nothing. She doesn't need to. Every time she promotes a new book release on her channel, she sends tens of thousands of customers over to her product page. Customers who are extremely motivated to buy her book. And because those customers love her so much, what do you think they do after buying her book? They leave glowing five-star reviews. Lots of them. And because she sells so many books in the first month of her launch, what do you think happens to her search ranking? It goes to the first page. And because the book is so new, and because it already has so many good reviews, even customers who have no idea who Pick Candle is start buying her book as well. So between the new customers and all of the customers that she's continually sending over to Amazon from her YouTube channel, her book continues to rank on the first page of search, even without advertising. And this is seven years later. That's right, this book is still making $1,000 per month in royalties seven years after she published it. And if that wasn't impressive enough, I just want to point out that she hasn't posted a new video on her channel in over two years, and she only has 43 videos on her channel in total. So not only is she getting the royalties from her book sales every month, but she's also getting the ad revenue from her videos, the commissions from any affiliate promotions she's running on her channel, as well as the income from any online video courses or any other products that she may be selling in her videos. And all of this continues to pay out even long after she stops posting videos. This is the truest form of passive income. Yes, it's great to have a source of income that continues to pay out for a few months or even a few years after you create it with only a minimum monetary outlay on your part. But the ultimate goal is to create a perpetual money-making machine that never stops even long after you do. Let me give you another example. So this is Chris Chang. Chris, in my artistic opinion, is the most talented colorist on YouTube today. She has over 100,000 subscribers, her channel has over 500 videos on it, and what she does in her videos is basically teach people how to color like a professional. Now Chris has a great mind for business, because most of the images she's coloring in her videos are images that she drew herself. And because her viewers want to be coloring the same image that she is in the video, she sells the images as digital downloads so that her viewers can print them out on their home printers. And if you look at her Etsy store, you can see that even though she only has 52 images in her store, she has over 6,000 sales and her images are selling like crazy. Look how many people have them in their cart. And just based on the number of sales and the average price of one of her illustrations, I'd say that her store has made around $21,000 in profit. And that's off just 52 images. That's not even one coloring book worth of images. Now at the moment, she really doesn't have quite enough images to create a full coloring book. But I'm sure that once she does, she'll probably create a print coloring book to sell on Amazon. And I have no doubt that that book will also sell just as well as her digital prints do. And because most of her sales are coming by the way of her YouTube channel, and because those sales are causing her products to rank higher in search results, she's able to keep her images appearing on the first few pages of search organically without having to spend any money on advertising. And that's driving even more customers to her store from the Etsy marketplace. And let's not forget that on top of her sales revenue, she's still making money from the ads on her YouTube videos, as well as from affiliate partnerships, sponsorships, as well as any online courses or products that she may be offering. So you can see why when using this method to market your books, that due to the multiple income streams, as well as the targeted customers, it's extremely possible to make five, six, and even $7,000 per month in passive income. And that's just with one book. Yes, it takes time to make YouTube videos, but it also takes quite a bit of time to make a thousand good quality books. Now I know some of you are thinking right now, but I'm not an artist, so I can't do this. But the truth is, you don't have to be an artist to do this. If you're a fan of chess, create a YouTube channel that teaches people how to play chess, and then create a chess scorebook to sell to your subscribers on Amazon. If you're into fitness, Create a fitness YouTube channel and then sell your subscribers your own personal fitness tracker or weight loss journal. If you like Sudoku puzzles, create a YouTube channel that teaches people how to do Sudokus. Yes, there's a YouTube channel for that and it's doing pretty damn well with over half a million subscribers. And then you could just keep creating different volumes of Sudoku puzzle books to sell to your viewers. Remember, most of these book ideas I just gave you are not one-time purchases. 
Most of these books would be filled up in a matter of just a few months, so your viewers would want to purchase another one, which means repeat customers. And regardless of which type of YouTube channel you create, you will always be earning additional income from your channel ads, affiliate partnerships, sponsorships, as well as anything else you may want to sell on your channel. When it comes to what type of YouTube channel you can start or what type of lower medium content book you can create, the only limitation is your own imagination. Now it's quite obvious that this method of marketing your low and medium content books has more ink potential than any of the other methods by far. But that being said, it's certainly not for everyone. And if you're one of those people who just aren't ready to dive into the creator world of YouTube, then just know that all of the other methods that I mentioned throughout this video still have the potential to make an incredible passive income for you. But if you should change your mind about the whole YouTube thing, just know that my playlist, How to Get Started on YouTube, will be right here waiting for you when you're ready. In the meantime, if you'd like to learn more about self-publishing low and medium content books on Amazon, then be sure and check out my playlist, Self-Publishing 101. It has everything you need to get your self-publishing business up and running, and you can find a link to it right here. Until next time, take care.